Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, John. Hello, John. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> All the Johns look good. How are you, John? <laughs> I'm very, very well. Hello, guys. Uh, um, so uh, being uh, a food and wine critic and a travel writer, really? you know about how much it costs when you go on vacation, you go somewhere to have, a, you know, first of all, we're kind of in the mood to spend money. It's, a, oh, it's a vacation. Let's have a big dinner, you know. But it really, when you're on vacation, you really have to kind of budget your money. How do you save money on food on vacation? Well, the first and foremost thing is, uh, and I'm, I'm talking about people traveling with their, their family especially, but uh, even if you're traveling alone with your, your wife or loved one, um, never, ever open the room service, uh, rather the, um, the, the mini bar in your hotel. Um, a pack of the Snickers is going to cost you nine dollars. A bottle of water is going to cost you six dollars. And you know, oh, it's right there. I'll take it and so forth. And then that shows up on your bill. And um, you should dispute it. By the way, they're always going to say, "Well, didn't you have this?" But no, I didn't have that. They'll take it right off, as long as it hasn't been too many things. Like once, my sons, my two sons, and their friend, we were in Aspen, Colorado, years ago. I got a two hundred dollar bill from the mini bar, which I could not dispute. Um, but that's the first thing. It's the most expensive. <laughs> Second one is room service itself. Now, I know, and I've done it, you know, sometimes you get in dead tired, jet lag, and so forth. They just want a hamburger and a glass of wine. If you order room service, just be aware that that room service, because of the service charge to bring it up to you, that is all built in, and uh, inflated prices, It's it, it seems like no matter what you order, from room service, whether it's pancakes or a hamburger, it's going to cost thirty-six bucks. Right. It always does. So that's that's really a crazy way to uh, to, to uh, spend your hard-earned money. Money. Um, another thing is that there aren't too many cafeterias left in the United States or cafeteria chains, which I prefer to um, fast food chains. I mean, you know what you're getting in fast food chain. Yeah, sure, McDonald's is cheap, but that adds up when you're with a family too. But at cafeterias, they used to have movies and, and, and uh, Morrison's, um, all over the South especially. They're, they're kind of a hard time, but that food is as fresh as could possibly be. The array of offerings is remarkable, and it's always family style, kind of eat as much as you want, and you can do it cheaply. Um, if you come across, or you're driving down Route 66 or wherever, and you see a cafeteria, pull over. And uh, you're going to eat really well. One of my favorite places uh, is Versailles, which is a Cuban cafeteria in Miami Beach. And it's real Cuban food. It's it's kitschy looking place and it's really hilarious. Um, but uh, boy, is that food good. Um, Chinatown are uh, usually a very, very good buy, um, especially if you're going for the uh, dim sum which they bring, they wheel around for you and you say, I want that, that and that. And they just give you a little bowl, which usually has a little a tin that usually has three or four of the dim sum in it. And you eat your fill. And at the end, I've always been amazed that, my God, we ate all this food for 28 bucks. Um, Chinatown's very, very good in that respect. Also, Indian restaurants, the buffet, which is usually never more than twelve ninety five, thirteen ninety five. All you can eat of a buffet that's going to have it's going to have curries, it's going to have beef, it's going to have chicken, it's going to have paratha bread, it's going to have basmati rice, it's going to have vegetables, and, and so forth. Indian restaurants are uh, terrific that way. Ethnic restaurants are, generally speaking, of that kind. Um, Brazilian restaurants, which also have a buffet, uh, are a very good way to go. So, um, county fairs. County fairs are wonderful. We don't have them much here in the East. You have to, I live in New York. You have, to, you have to get to Pennsylvania and Ohio and, and, and South to go to county fairs. But like the huge ones they have in the Midwest, which are multi, multi-million dollar makers. But there, you know, you go, and there's a place that sells funnel cakes and donuts. Well, actually, they fry everything. They fry absolutely everything. <laughs> they fry butter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had fried bananas. Uh, and, fr and fried ice cream at a county fair. 
deep fried grilled cheese sandwiches. And, you know, well, what are you saying, John? I, I've had fried bananas and fried ice cream at yes. the here. Yeah, but the stuff is cheap and it's filling and it's a lot of fun. And, um, and and just the atmosphere itself, walking down those corridors with the smell of uh, the, the grease and the, and the cotton candy and all those things. Remember, what was that song, um, uh, Under the Boardwalk? You can yes. almost smell the hot dogs. and Well, yeah. you really, really can. Um, another thing is have a big breakfast at a good uh, diner uh, and skimp on lunch, Okay. Um, or don't even have lunch, just head into an early dinner. Now, I know that early bird specials are early bird dinners are for Frank Costanza and his wife <laughs> <laughs> and the and the, uh, the Seinfelds and down there, you know, like 530 is, a, is late for those people to eat. But those early bird dinners that they do have all over the United States can be astonishing buys. And it's going to be again, cafeteria style food it's not haute cuisine but it's generally it's very fresh it's really just been prepared that day and there's going to be all these these pies and, and vegetables and anything you want to eat you can go vegetarian you can go for, for meat um so that's that's something i really highly recommend i want to add one tip uh, uh, yeah, most expensive things you can go to uh, yeah. far more so uh, you could eat at the finest french restaurant in in new york and spend approximately what you're going to spend for a steakhouse dinner because mainly because the steak itself now costs 65 bucks and this is true in new york as it is in kansas city by the way mm -hmm. uh, even if you go to one of the chains 60 65 bucks for the steak the potatoes 10 12 dollars the um cheesecake is 10 12 dollars the shrimp cocktail is 22 dollars the plate of pasta is 26 dollars and, I mean, it gets a little ridiculous. This cream spinach is twelve bucks. You can easily, without wine and drinks. Oh, then the martinis are eighteen, nineteen dollars, and a bottle of Plonk is going to cost you a hundred. So, steakhouse dinner goes well over a hundred dollars. And if you got a family, that's a two, three, four hundred dollar uh, splurge. Don't take the kids to a good steakhouse. That's what I say. <laughs> Well, take them to the take them to a hot dog stand. If you're going to do it, remember those steaks are 16 ounces, so you can split dishes. Sometimes they put a little old split dish extra ten dollars. It's worth it because you're not spending another sixty bucks. Okay. Yeah. So I have one tip that I'd like to add to the end of this, and that is that um, I had uh, an aunt and uncle who loved their cocktails, mm -hmm. and they would have their cocktails in the room. Mm -hmm. Buy a bottle. Do whatever they mix their whatever they were like they did they mixed they put in the ice they had their cocktail then they'd go to dinner, mm -hmm. and um, and boy was that a big money saver and I didn't realize it until I don't know recently you know the older you get the more money conscious you become I think most of us, and uh, we were having cocktails at a restaurant and I thought to myself when we when we got the bill holy cow if we had just omitted the cocktails yeah. Uh, this would have been an affordable meal, you know. Yeah, just go to the, you know the the local little store, buy a pint of uh, bourbon or something, and some mixers, and you're good to go. Sure, like like Art does, brown bag. You know. brown yeah, bag. here's a problem, John. Uh, I know that if we were on the road doing a, a, a documentary or something, and we had cocktails in the room before dinner, we might never get to dinner. Yeah, well that happens. <laughs> <laughs> John, good advice as always. A, a nice mixture of travel and food advice. Thank you. Thank you. See you again soon. We'll see you on the Virtual Gourmet, available free at johnmariani.com. Absolutely, positively. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.